All right, so we're back. Um, I'm going to do another example here real quick. Uh, and this time, instead of fetching from a fixed list of data points that we're going to train on, we're going to fetch from a function. Um, and we'll do a little bit of function fitting. We'll start off very simple, and we'll just try and fit a parabola. Uh, parabola fitting example. OK. Now, for a parabola, I just need one input and one output. I will go ahead and leave this at none, sigmoid, and linear for the transfer functions, and it is a one to one network. vpn.name is parabola. OK. So we're going to need a couple of variables here. We're going to need a double error to track the error, and a max error, which will be a uh, limit. And let's make this 0 0.000001. Okay. We're going to need a int counter, uh, which is going to start off at 0, and an integer called samples, which we'll say is 25. Right? And that'll be the number of samples we take from our random interval from negative 1 to 1 um, and train on those points. Okay. We're going to need the actual input and output arrays. So double array input and output. Okay. Uh, input equals new double array of size 1. And output equals new double array of size 1. So that will be that. Oh, and I'm going to need random numbers. Uh, so we're going to need a random number generator. Let's call it gen equals new random. All right. So now let's do the following. So do while, and we're going to do this while, sorry, I missed a brace. Um, <clears throat> so while the error is greater than max error, uh, and the counter is less than, actually let's do, let's add another integer called max counter and make it 10,000, okay? Greater than, or sorry, less than 10,000, oops, max counter. Okay, so we're gonna train in here until um, we <clears throat> either hit our maximum count, which we can just define up here, or our error is sufficiently small so that it is less than our maximum error. Okay, so first of all, counter plus plus, let's increment that so we're not stuck in a loop forever. Let's do a for loop, so for int i equals zero, i is less than samples, i plus plus. Let's do the following. So in this loop, we're going to pick a random, uh, flow, a random double between negative 1 and 1 and compute then its square, because for that input, um, it, since we're fitting a parabola, you know, f of x equals x squared, um, that will be the corresponding output. Sorry, f of x equals x squared. So let's go ahead and do that. So input of 0 equals... 2 times gen dot next double minus 1, right? Gen dot next double returns a random number on the closed interval between 0 and 1. So 2 times that minus 1 gives us a random number between negative 1 and positive 1. For this input, the appropriate output is obviously input squared. So let's just go ahead and write that down. Equals input at 0. And now let's go ahead and train this data point. So our error will get incremented by vpn dot train. Uh, now the input we're going to pass in is our input array here. The output that we desire is in the output array. The training rate will be 0 0.25, let's say, and the momentum rate will be 0 0.1. That sounds good. Um, oh. Also, after incrementing the counter, let's set the error equal to 0, 0.0. So for every time through this loop, we'll start off with no error and go through all of our samples here, which is 25 for now, um, and accumulate error. And these will be randomly picked. So we don't actually have these known ahead of time. We're just going to pick some numbers and start training our network to learn that output. OK? Um, and let's do something similar to before, where every, let's say, 100 um, times through this loop. So if counter mod 100 
equals zero. Let's uh, print out just some output so we know what's happening. So right line epic zero completed with error one out to, I don't know, six decimal places. Okay, and this will be counter error like that. Uh, okay, so then when we're done, let's let me copy. Well, let me copy this console line. So after we exit the loop, either we bombed out because we hit the counter, or we finished at our certain error. So the counter will be still available. So the counter will be whatever it is, epic that completed with error, whatever the last error was on this run. And um, that will print it out. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Oh, hit 10,000. OK, so we made it all the way to 10,000. But it looks like, if we look back at the error here, we were headed in the right direction. OK, so let's, uh, let's see if we can't make it a little bit better. So we'll leave our uh, maximum error set to here. This is pretty refined. And let's go ahead and make our max counter, um, what is that, 100,000? And let's, instead of displaying it every 100, let's only display it every 500. OK, now let's run that again and see what we get. Hmm, looks like it can't quite make it. It's pretty darn small, but we're not quite there. Now, that could be one of several things. Maybe the network isn't flexible enough to give us a perfect answer. Um, or maybe, maybe there's not enough layers to do it, or maybe uh, the, the samples are too many. Uh, it could be any number of things. But just for argument's sake, let's go ahead and leave it the way it is. And I guess we should have done this earlier. Let's go ahead and save this network, vpn.save, uh, c colon slash temp slash parabola.xml. All right, let's run that. We made it all the way to, oh, that one did not work out well at all. <laughs> Interesting. Let's try that again. Oh, see, this one is pretty darn close, but didn't quite make it. OK, so let me go ahead and pause this. I will bring up the uh, Parabola XML here. So this is the one that we just created. Here's the XML for it. Uh, right, sigmoid, linear. There's the bias. There's the weights. Now look at how similar these weights are right here. 2.324, negative. 2.324, positive. Look at the biases, negative 2.703, negative 2.703. Uh, interesting, right? And these weights here, very, very similar, very, very similar. And this bias has nothing to be compared to. Um, there is obviously a reason for this. Uh, but for the time being, I'm just going to pause this, and I'll bring it up in Mathematica and see if we can't plot this to compare it to a real parabola and see what we get. OK, so here we go. All right, so we're back. Um, OK, so I just paused it and took all of our uh, weights here and biases and built them up like I usually do. There's my sigmoid transfer function. There's the first node in the hidden layer. There's the second node in the hidden layer. And f of x is just combining those by the weights and bias that give us our output. OK, so if I run this like so, then I can go ahead and plot this. Let's plot f of x as x goes from negative 1 to 1. Enter. OK. So that actually looks pretty good. Um, now, we only trained on data between negative 1 and 1. So it's likely the case that if I open this up, let's make this, let's say, negative 3 to 3. Um, what do you think is going to happen when we look outside of the range that we trained on? Well. Either it's going to look perfect and be a parabola, which seems unlikely, or it's going to do something else. Well, there you go. Now, we only trained up to about here. And so in here, it does look vaguely parabolic. Clearly, out here, it's not parabolic. And this is something that's important to know uh, when you're trying to extrapolate with things like backpropagation networks. If you haven't trained on this region of the data, um, it's not necessarily the case that you know what is going to be coming outside of the region that you trained on, right? 
that's totally undefined and what the network does out there is unimportant because it does not contribute to error and so it doesn't do anything with regard to the gradient descent algorithm um, and is completely ignored. Okay, so that's my spiel on that. Let's go back to our negative one to one range, which does look good. And let's go ahead and throw this up next to the actual function x squared. So x squared and see what we get. Now I don't know if you can see it, uh, but there's a red line <laughs> that's in there and it actually is laying pretty much right on top of it. Let's see if we can make this bigger and see any of the other places where it varies. Um, it's pretty damn good. Okay, so up there it's just a smidgen higher. Up there it's just a smidgen higher. Uh, so this is, I mean, it's, that's really close. So let's again open this up a little bit. Let's just go, let's say, negative 2 to 2 this time and see what we see. Now here you can see the difference, right? The red function here is x squared, comes down, boom, right? Once we get inside of our domain from negative 1 to 1, they are just right on the money. And then boom, once we run outside the domain, they just separate, okay? So this actually is a great illustration that displays what you use to train really, really matters, okay? Um, realistically, since we're gonna go back to it, let me minimize this. Part of the reason that it took us so long to get this particular accuracy and we actually hit our epic uh, max counter of 100,000 is because I mean, it, this is a very inflexible network when you think about it. This is very, very simple. Okay, I have one input, a single hidden layer with a sigmoid transfer function, and one output. Keep in mind that this sigmoid transfer function can't actually even attain the value 0 or 1. And on this uh, domain that we trained on, the parabola clearly goes through points at 0 and at 1. So that scaling there had to be completely handled by this uh, transformation into the output layer of which there was only two weights to connect them. I would be willing to bet that if we upped this to, I don't know, four or something, it would probably converge faster, uh, but that's just a guess. So let's find out. Oh, still taking a while. Okay, so then maybe we can try something else. We still got down to a small error. Uh, let's try something different. Let's try instead of a three layer network, let's try a four layer network. Okay, so one, two, two, one. And let's go ahead and make the, both of the transfer functions in the middle sigmoid. All right, just for, just for giggles, see what it does. Oops, sorry, this needs to be a four now. This needs to be a four. And uh, let's experiment. Getting small. Yeah, it looks like we're just kind of hovering around this. Couldn't quite get there. Okay, so this isn't necessarily better. Um, what else could we do? Let's take this back to a three-layer network. And let's try something different for a transfer function. Let's try, for instance, the rational sigmoid. Okay? Theoretically, this actually goes through the values um, 0 and 1. Well, it doesn't attain 1, but... Uh, let's just see what it does. And there we go. Okay, so I don't know, maybe maybe it's not better, maybe it's a little better. Um, that is sort of up to you. Okay, now keep in mind, single input, very restricted number of nodes on the hidden layer, not very many layers. It's It's getting pretty damn close, but it's not able to just nail it right on the money. But again, if we go back here and look at our negative one to one interval, I mean, that's, it's good. <laughs> I can barely tell the difference, right? The line just looks purple instead of like a blue and a red line, okay? Um, so I'll wrap this up right now because I've been blabbering for a long time, but um, th this illustrates several things. One, the, the data you choose to train on is extremely important. Two, precision and exact fitting because really when you think about it, I want you to pick any any random points in here, 25 of them. I don't want to compute the, the square of the difference between the actual output from the network and the real function. Add those all up and that has to be less than whatever it was, like 100,000. That's, that's pretty good.
Okay, so till next time.